Okay, hi everyone. I'm Julia from Mansung Engineering. Thank you for joining us this afternoon at our webinar. Okay, today our speakers, Marina, our business development manager, and Siva Krishna, our sales engineer, will be sharing with us um, the three methods that we can use to improve the lifespan of heat exchangers. Um, these are mainly um, our high pressure water cleaning, also tube ID mechanical cleaning, whereby we use Conco's True Fit and Hydro Drill technologies. And we will also be sharing with you the third method, whereby we use the tube ID grid blasting by Curran technology. Also introducing um, Andy, Siva Salapan and Kumaran from our specialized service department, who will also be joining us during this webinar to address any questions that you guys may have. So just to go a few of the technical aspects of this webinar, on the right hand side of the screen, you can see a Q&A box section. So if you have any questions at all during this webinar, please feel free to type in your questions in the Q&A box. Um, we will be addressing these questions at the end of the webinar. Okay, so just to share a little bit about Mansiong, we are one of the leading construction and integrated maintenance solution providers. We offer a range of mechanical and electrical and instrumentation services for oil and gas, um, process, petrochemical, energy, chemicals, power and pharmaceutical industries. We provide engineering design, plan construction projects, including off-site prefabrication, on-site fabrication works, including mechanical works for piping, um, tank construction, fixed equipment, um, rotating equipment installation, and also steel erection. So we have over 50 years of solid experience providing term maintenance, turnaround, shutdown, and integrated maintenance of plants and equipment. We also host exclusive um, products and specialized services to meet our clients' um, needs and demands, such as high pressure water jetting, retubing, bundle fabrication, um, decoking, and we are also equipped with the latest technologies to stay ahead of the demand of making a point to pursue the highest standards and of safety and consistency. Okay, so with that, I'll be handing it over to Siva who will be sharing with us the first method of improving the durability of heat exchangers. Thank you, Julia. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, this is Siva, Senior Sales Engineer at Mansiang. I hope everyone doing well and safe. Today, I would like to share with you how high pressure water cleaning helps to improve the efficiency of the heat exchanger. As we know, uh, the heat exchanger is a system used to transfer the heat between the two or more fluids and uh, used in the both cooling and heating process. Widely using these uh, heat exchangers in the refineries, petrochemicals, power stations, and uh, chemical plants, and etc. So what happens is that after many passes through, the scale or any other deposit particles on the heat exchanger tubes, internal or external surface, sometimes it acts as an insulator. So such deposits uh, can drastically limit the system ability to transfer the heat and the driving op operational cost substantially is higher. And moreover, adding the indirect cost like downtime and compliance with the safety and environmental regulations, eventually the pressure on the maintenance budget is intense. So in order to avoid any major equipment repair, such as uh, retubing, plugging, or enter the bundle replacement, a regular maintenance is essential to clean the heat exchanger tubes from the hot deposits. So what is our recommendation is high pressure water, water cleaning is a major solution to resolving these kind of issues. By practicing a regular and a proactive cleaning of the heat exchangers can improve the thermal efficiency of the heat exchangers. So we have a range uh, from 5000 to 40,000 PSI hydrojetting missions and uh, it can be helped to clean the stubborn products and uh, fouling on the surfaces. Mansang has been providing the high pressure water cleaning services uh, for many years, uh, especially in Jurong Island and Bukom. Our clients are using the high pressure water jet cleaning for the external and internal cleaning of the heat exchanger tubes, air fin coolers, pipelines, vessels, columns, tanks, and etc. So, and then we have uh, technical experts to, pro to propose the best solution to clean the plant equipment eff effectively and uh, safely without any damages. Okay, this is the high pressure pump we usually call NLB225. Basically, it will come with the skid dot trolley. So this system that includes the diesel engine, 
pressure pump, high pressure hoses, nozzles, and various accessories to create the necessary volume and uh, pressure. So this pump can be built up to from 8,000 to 40,000 PSI uh, within 20 minutes. And uh, it has a rapture uh, disc assembly to re relieve the pressure spikes. And uh, it has a pressure locking device uh, to maintain the pressure and to handle the range of scenarios and problems. We own our own high range of uh, hydro jetting missions and customized nozzles to achieve the optimal results. So uh, it has an inlet water filter as well to keep the pump free from the dirt. So traditionally, uh, manual method, uh, as we know, the manual cleaning is the most common and uh, economical method to clean the tubes. Uh, generally, it requires an operator to manually feed the nozzles into the, each tube that need to be cleaned. So once the new, uh, nozzle is uh, positioned into the tube, the operator start to flow the high pressure water by depressing the foot pedal. And this process is uh, well effective, but it has its own drawbacks like uh, it's take time consuming and uh, holding the hose with the high pressure water rush through the rushing, it can be very tiring for the operator and even it is not safe. So sometimes so the operator may not always uh, feed the nozzles into the tubes at the same speed, so which can be result into the uneven cleaning. So what we are what we introducing is a semi-auto or automated system. It will eliminate the operator presence near to the water jetting area and providing much more safety to the operator. There is a significant difference in the cleaning time when as comparing to the manual water jetting. So these systems uh, cleaning the tubes typically have uh, like uh, multiple lens and hoses. Semi-automated systems are operating typically controlling by the remote positions and uh, it has a hose and lenses uh, usually providing the different sizes uh, suits to the different tube diameters. And uh, changing power uh, should be simple and minimize. Basically, we have like a two types. One is a flexible lens system. Another one is a rigid lens system. So when it comes to the flexible lens system, um, it has mainly main advantage. Uh, it can be go through the bends in the tubes and offer more positioning flexible during the cleaning process. The larger system has like a XY position device uh, that let operator to put the hoses into the position for the cleaning cycle. So these systems can feed the three individual hoses into the tubes at the same time. OK, this is the mission we call LTC mission. Uh, it is a single lens, uh, single flexible lens and excellent in the cleaning results due to the consistency speed and the front and black back cleaning, greatly increasing the both productivity and operator safety. So operators usually uh, use this mission to by positioning the nozzle end against the tube to be clean. And the operator can operate this uh, simple controlling system to retract and extract the high pressure hoses and with appropriate speed into the tube while applying the water pressure. Consistently speed the both backward and forward delivers the excellent cleaning results in the short time possible. So a standard uh, single lens mission, uh, mostly suitable for the 4x2 or 5x2 or DN4 and 5 and uh, 1x16 and uh, 1x8 flexible lens. OK, this is the, another mission we call a uh, three flexible lens system. OK, this actually it is especially designed for the air fin coolers and vertical heat exchangers. It is a fast to assemble and disassemble and able to clean the three tubes at the same time. And it has a rotating nozzles uh, to providing the effective cleanness. And the maximum working pressure is around 40,000 PSI and it can be cleaned the full bundle length. Uh, if the bundle is a bigger diameter, so it has an extendable aluminum arm and the maximum length speed is like a two feet per seconds. So when come to the rigid lens system, it has a smaller diameter pipes uh, with a high pressure nozzles at the end uh, to clean the tubes. And this piping is a rigid, so the system can literally go forcefully nozzles through the block tubes and this adds a mechanical force to the water jets and make the cleaning action even much more stronger. So however, these pipes tends to be uh, quite long, uh, usually like a uh, 30 feet length. Uh, so a rigid uh, lens system uh, can require more operating space uh, than flexible lens systems. 
Okay, uh, this is uh, this is we call a uh, ultra high pressure uh, rigid lens system. So basically, it is a semi auto type. It's a design for the hot scale removal by using the ultra high pressure. So you can see in the picture, uh, actually it has a two two tubes. So it can clean the two tubes at the same time, and the maximum working pressure is uh, like forty thousand psi, and uh, it has a rotating uh, rigid lens and controlling by the pneumatic uh, joysticks uh, for the operator convenience and the safety purpose, and uh, it can clean the uh, bundle lens is around seven meter length we can clean at the same time. OK, this is another mission. Uh, this is another type of uh, semi automated uh, tube internal cleaning mission we have. This mission can clean the tube bundle three times faster than manual method and uh, set a new standard for the operator safety and comfort. An adjustable lens stroke lets you lets you to configure the system uh, up to like uh, 30 feet length. This mission can clean the four tubes at the same time, and the maximum working pressure is up to 20,000 psi, and it is self uh, completely self-contained system and uh, safe for the operator and effective way to clean the bundles. So when it come to the shell side cleaning, we have a mission is called SSC 9500 shell jet cleaner. This is a semi automated uh, semi automated mission. Uh, shell side cleaning systems is more effective when comparing to the manual water blasting while minimizing the operator exposed to debris and high pressure water. Uh, the new shell jet is more operator friendly than ever uh, with a new uh, like a control system and it and let the operator to stay outside the water blasting area. So using the high pressure is like like uh, 50, 000, 15 15,000 uh, PSA. The, uh, the spin jet head is a uh, compact and a knuckle style uh, crane. So blast the bundles uh, and this system consisting uh, bundle rollers as well uh, to help to rotate the bundle at the same time of cleaning. So it is easy to transport uh, to the job sites and washing base uh, because it has a trailer mounted type and it is suitable for the on site cleaning washing base at the plant locations and uh, wireless control for the operator safety purpose. And uh, this is can assurance the complete coverage of the full bundle length and the diameter to be clean. Similarly, similarly, we have a fast rotating type uh, external blasting missions and a five nozzle gun type mission as well uh, to remove the, all the stubborn uh, scale deposits. We able to clean the bundle uh, bigger diameters as well uh, by using the bundle rollers and uh, these all the missions are uh, used for the shell side cleaning. So when come to the productivity and benefits, since the tube cleaning is a play a key, key role in the maintenance of the heat exchanger efficiency, which is a very critical factor in the petrochemical uh, quality and productivity. So let's say uh, we're talking about uh, we're cleaning like uh, 100 tubes. So when come to the manual uh, manual water blasting, it has only one single lens. So approximately it will like like take like a 10 minutes time. So for the 100 tubes, it will take all together is like the 16 hours. When come to the semi automated dual flexi lens system, it has a two lens. So for each tube, it will take like five minutes only. So altogether, it will take like four hours to complete the 100 tubes. So overall, you will save the time is like a 12 hours. So when come to the triple flex lens system, it has a three lens system and uh, each each tube is will take like a five minutes. So since the it has a three lens, so altogether the time it will take like a 2.75 hours, so less than three hours, right? Uh, so when fully automated system is a rigid lens system, it has a five lens, uh, so it will each tube is would take like only four minutes. So altogether is like uh, to clean the 100 tubes is take like 1.3 hours. So altogether you will save like a four, more than 14 hours time. So high pressure water cleaning is a proven method for the cleaning the tubes clearly from the deposits. And today automation systems are more effective and more operator friendly than ever before. Hydrojetting plays a significant role in the cleaning of the heat exchangers and improve the thermal efficiency. So this is all about the high pressure water cleaning. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the Q&A sections. And now I will hand over to Marina, who will talk about another technology is called Conco Systems. Thank you. Thank you, Siva. Hi, everyone. This is Marina. I'm the business development manager. So we understand how important it is to regularly clean your heat exchanger in order to remove deposits, restore the flow and improve the condenser performance. So a regular cleaning will improve the longevity of your equipment. So it is essential. At Mansion, we also propose another cleaning method, uh, which is bullet cleaning or tube shooting. And we partner with Conco System in the United States 
who are the pioneers in bullet cleaning. So for 90 years, Conco provides tube ID cleaning using custom sized mechanical cleaners, drill bits and brushes and safe low pressure water to thoroughly clean heat exchangers of all shapes. So Conco has been serving various industries such as oil and gas, petrochemical, refineries, power generation, nuclear power, food and beverage and also marine. And at Mansiong, we are equipped with uh, two pieces of equipment uh, and systems to provide tube shooting with the Conco True Fit technology and hydro drilling uh, with the hydro drill machine. So for both True Fit cleaners and hydro drill, we can clean tubes up to 24 meters length. True Fit cleaners can be customized to any size and the usual size is half to one quarter inch tube ID to remove soft to hard deposits. Hydro drill is suitable for tube ID size of 3 by 8 to 6 inch and will remove the toughest deposits such as coke, bauxite, asphalt, calcium carbonate. So the completed block tubes can be restored to 100% of the original tube ID in one single pass. Now, how bullet cleaning works? So we will use the Conco Pro Series tube cleaning system, which is a portable pump system that will increase available water pressure to 200 to 300 PSI necessary for effective cleaning. And then we need a gun and a hose. So to set up an operation is simple. We start by connecting the system to your power and water supply and then connect the inlet and outlet hoses and water gun. And basically we are just ready to begin cleaning. So we will select the most effective tube cleaner to do the job. We will insert the tube cleaner into each tube and utilize the water gun and pump system to shut the cleaner through the tubes. The cleaners will be collected and reshot a number of times depending on the quality requirements of the cleaner design. So now let's have a look to the anatomy of the cleaners. Cleaners are ID size of your tube to the exact measurement, so we don't need to adjust them in the field. The big advantage is that it allows cleaning of both horizontal and vertical exchangers in the straight or U-tube bundle configurations. They are spring loaded uh, with the radial design blades and they travel through the tube at 3 meters to, to 6 meters per second at 200 to 300 PSI. They keep 100% of contact with the tube going through it to have an efficient cleaning. So then you are able to test these exchangers tubes. The water flushes deposits, leaving a polished finish. So again, the big advantage is that we can go around U-bends with this technology. Another asset is that once finished cleaning, there will be very little water, which is maybe 10% of hydrodating and the deposit itself can be shoveled up in the basket. So also it's an environmental friendly solution. The process again is very fast, efficient, and the tubes are ready for testing. We have a video here that will give you a visual about the Trophy technology. So an effective cleaning uh, begins by selecting the correct cleaner type. So we need to choose a cleaner that suits both the type of hauling that you have and the tube material as well as its condition. 
So H brush, for example, which is a nylon brush, is a very good when you have a silt mud and it's relatively light. However, if the silt or the mud gets too heavy, you're going to have to move to a heavier cleaner, like maybe a middle scraper. So if you have scale also, we will advise you to use a middle scraper. But if you have like manganese in your stainless steel tube, then uh, you have to use the stainless steel brush, which is a QTB. So how exactly do you know what do you have in that tube? Uh, so we will recommend you to take some pictures um, and show to us. We can also do an elemental analysis, uh, send it to a lab for testing, and then our engineers will be able to advise. So the other piece of equipment that we have is the hydro drill. So hydro drill can effectively clean tubes fouled with a hard deposit such as coke, calcium, sulfur, bauxite, oxides and polymers. So the completely blocked tubes can be restored to 100% of the original tube ID in one pass. Now let's have a look to the features of the hydro drill. So hydro drill uses a long single piece of rod with a variety of drills and brushes to remove the hardest deposits. A small volume of water is injected between the bead and the wall to act as a fluid cushion and the deposits are flushed out of the tube. So the hydro drill can even accommodate tubes that are bowed since the long slender rod that drives the bead inherently bends to follow the tube. The hydro drill uses a small volume of water supplied at 200 to 300 psi by the Conco booster pump. And it typically cleans six metal long tube in 30 to 90 seconds. So the hydro drill also eliminates the need for expensive off-site thermal or chemical cleaning treatments. It polishes tube ID to as new condition. Again, we have different type of drill bits and brushes to suit both the tube material and also its condition. So the hydro drill is safe for your equipment and also for people. The hydro drill bit itself is sized to 0 0.127 millimeters below the minimum tube ID to allow for maximum cleaning effectiveness with no risk of tube damage. Um, hydro drill bits are also designed with long shanks to ensure that the axis of the bit and the axis of the tube are in complete alignment. Also, uh, the bit is designed with scrapers on the leading edge only and rounded corners to ensure no sharp edge gouge the tube wall. And also, since there is no high pressure water or hazardous chemical use, the risk of personal injury or, or property damage is reduced. So basically, hydro drill lowers overall cost in five ways. So the first way is that it extremely is extremely effect, effective on hard tough deposits. So it's at cost associated with other methods that will take longer or that just will not work at all. And also it can clean bundles on site that typically needs to be sent off site for expensive cleaning treatments such as thermical or chemical cleaning. And it can clean tubes in one pass, so it will reduce the labor cost for other methods that will require multiple passes. It clean tubes to 100% of the original ID, so the inspection can be done without the cost and hassle of re-cleaning. And hydro drill technology is delivered by our experienced and highly motivated crews that will complete job safely, on time and on budget. So this is the end of my presentation. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the Q&A section bar. And I will now hand over to Siva. We will talk about the third method, which is a grid blasting technology. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marina. Uh, hello to everyone. Uh, I would like to share with you how this grid blasting technology and uh, current coating helps to improve the heat exchanger efficiency. Uh, we are partnering with the Current International from US uh, who is specialized in the tube coating and grid blasting and uh, we are the solo distributor for Singapore and Malaysia market and we're providing the services like uh, tube ID cleaning and uh, thin film epoxy coating applications uh, to reduce the falling and the corrosion on the heat exchangers. So when comparing to the conventional tube cleaning, uh, grid blasting is offer uh, predictable results and they eliminate the cleaning reworks and uh, promoting the high integrity of the inspection data collections. So at Mansiang, uh, we equipped with uh, this dry grid blasting equipment and uh, have a trainer personnel. Uh, we have done a lot of uh, blasting and coating jobs in Jurong Island and Bukom. 
So basically, the grid blasting is a surface treatment process uh, where abrasive particles or the granites uh, go with a high velocity and high pressure compressed air uh, can remove the tendency scales and the deposit from the tube substracts and pits. So we use mainly this grid blasting for two purposes. One is for the cleaning, uh, tube ID cleaning. Another one is for the surface preparation for further coatings. So this, this technology can enable the performance uh, perform up to reach the white metal uh, on the painted or unpainted metal surfaces. You can see in this picture, uh, this is the tube actually is a three by quarter inch uh, OD tube uh, from the from the right top side photo uh, is a before uh, grid blasting and the bottom picture is after the grid blasting. So this kind of scenarios, uh, it will take like less than 60 seconds uh, for the each tube to be clean. And uh, you can see the difference uh, between the two. So basically the grid, dry grid blasting is to typically take like uh, 10 to 15 seconds for the new tubes and uh, 30 seconds to two minutes for the old tubes. It uh, depends on the condition of the tubes. Most of our customers approaching us uh, basically for the fin fan shell tube heat exchangers and boilers and uh, SRU condenser units. I want to show you. I want to show you this video how this uh, cleaning process is effective and you can see the carbon steel tube from the heat exchanger. See how badly it is corroded and once the grid blasting has done, you can see the difference. I just play the video. So you can see that after the blasting, the how the tube is uh, actually is uh, cleaned. Okay. Okay. Some of our clients basically is asking what is the difference between the hydro blasting and grid blasting. So actually, the both they have their own advantages. Uh, when come to the hydro blasting, uh, setup is easier and uh, you can use like 10,000 to 15,000 psi pressure to clean the tubes. But sometimes the results is not meet the inspection criteria, so need to do it again and again. So, but when come to the grid blasting. So it's only one time uh, you can achieve the inspection results and uh, NDA can meet and you can uh, even you can study further on the tube integrity. Okay, when we're doing the RFET, uh, indication notes that uh, the tube that was not called due to the lack of uniformity and uh, noise absorbed due to the scale and deposits even after the cleaning. So in the bottom, Indication notes that the tube was called after grid blasting. The signals are very uniform and obvious. Noted on the clear signals received from the, all the channels. So application wise, the grid blasting um, can actually used in the refinery, air coolers, hydrocarbon condenser units, sulfur condenser units, and uh, cooling water exchangers, SRU units. So the major benefit is that we can perform this uh, blasting uh, in on site as well uh, only for the NDE non destructive evaluation purpose and we have necessary equipment to prevent the noise and the full dust collection to avoid the abstraction to the other plant activities at the site. OK, this is all about the grid blasting and uh, now come to the tube ID coatings uh, from the current. So we have a variety of the coatings uh, of the different applications and a medium and temperature. So when you come to the current thousand, it is an advanced uh, two part 100% uh, solid epoxy coating is a design for the high temperature immersion services in the cooling water under high carbon and processing streams. And this coating is a basically is organic or inorganic uh, hybrid with a superior mechanical performance and uh, it can resistance the temperature up to 185 degrees Celsius and extrusion to 204 degrees Celsius. So usually we apply like uh, 8 to 14 mils uh, total DFA. So when come to the Coromix uh, 2500 uh, is ultra low DFT ambient cure coating system is designed for the high temperature falling services and uh, processing the excellent uh, hydrophobic and uh, oleophobic uh, properties and uh, anti coking performance and resistance to the thermal cycle and is suitable for the services up to temperature is like uh, 648 degrees Celsius. And usually we apply like a 20 to 40 microns total DFT. 
So basically, it is suitable for the, all the heat exchanger tubes, plates, and uh, frame exchangers, channels, and uh, heat exchanger components, and uh, crude uh, heaters. So when come to the baked phenolics, uh, basically this is we usually apply at the shop. So it is a baked catalyst and uh, suitable for all the cooling water services, uh, hydrocarbons and salt solutions and solvents and immersion resistance up to 108 degrees Celsius. And it is applied to the 7 to 10 mils uh, total DFT. So when come to uh, PFA or PTFE or uh, PPS, so when we usually we apply at the shop this coating as well uh, because it's a baked catalyst and thermomelts. So it has a great resistance with the chemicals and solvents and acids and uh, immersion resistance is up to 260 degrees Celsius. Uh, usually we apply like 8 to 14 mils uh, DFT. So when come to the soil gel, uh, usually we apply like uh, 20 to 40 microns total DFT. Basically, it is suitable for the, all the plates and uh, frames and uh, tube bundles in the process uh, critical services. So when come to the Coromix uh, 3500, uh, so it's advanced anti-coking uh, ceramic coating for the crude and hydrocarbon fuels. And uh, it is excellent uh, with the hydrophobic and uh, oleophobic uh, properties and the anti-coking performance and the resistance in the thermal cycle and uh, maintain the repellents uh, up to 400 degrees Celsius. So basically this is applied in the tube heat exchangers, tubes and um, frame exchangers and uh, like and usually we apply like uh, 12 to 38 microns total DFT. So this is all about the heat exchanger uh, tube ID coatings and uh, we have uh, protective coatings for the fixed equipment as well. So for example, like a uh, current 500 is an epoxy coating. So it's a high build with a coating that can be applied by brush or roller uh, in the one coating to the repair or uh, protecting the steel surfaces in the wet or immersion environmental. Uh, while it's still providing the excellent corrosion resistance. So basically it is suitable for the condenser and HVAC, HVAC uh, chiller tube sheets and a boiler and water boxes and a circular water pipes, channels and marine boxes, etc. So when come to the current uh, 1000R, uh, basically it's a solid uh, novel epoxy coating. So usually we use uh, by brush or the roller uh, for the high temperature immersion services in the cooling water and high, uh, high, uh, hydrocarbons and the processing steams areas. The temperature resistance in the water and the steam up to 185 degrees Celsius and the tolerance excursion uh, you can reach up to 204 degrees Celsius and it's suitable for the exchanger tube sheets uh, and the tube sheet repairs uh, of the current 1000 T coatings exchangers. So when come to the current uh, 1200 is an epoxy coating uh, basically, it's designed specifically, specifically for the high temperature immersion services in the water and the processing steam uh, with a stand up to 185 degrees Celsius. Uh, so basically, it will build the, uh, by usually we apply by sprayable applications. Uh, so usually we quote it up to 40 mils uh, in a single coat. So with outstanding uh, multiple cycles and the steam out even subjected to the process equipment. So it is suitable for the processing vessels and the hydrocarbon tanks and piping channels and towers, etc. So when come to the current uh, 1500, it basically is an uh, advanced two-part 100% solid epoxy coating. It's designed specially for the high temperature immersion services as well. So, uh, so this coating basically is uh, organic or inorganic hybrids and suitable for the, all the coal wall uh, exposures. And uh, it, even it can be emissionable uh, after the fully, fully cured. So it can be withstand uh, multi cycles on the steam out, out uh, even subjected to the process equipment. So it will suitable for the, all the um, heat exchanger equipments, components, channels, covers, and the floating heads, and the tube sheets, and the processing vessels, and the tanks, piping, and the water boxes, etc. So when come to the benefits uh, of these coatings, basically it will eliminate the corrosion, uh, the protection of the tube metal by poly polymer coating to prevent the oxy oxidization on the tube wall and uh, extend the life and eliminate the unplanned maintenance tube leaks and coating can be used to protect the against the aggressive acids and alkynes. And uh, it will eliminate the falling as well. Uh, so this coating will be reduce the surface tension of the every new tubes by providing like a factor like a 50 percent and inhibited uh, foulings uh, attached to the tube wall and eliminate the cleaning cycles. 
and it will maintain the heat transfer uh, coefficient over as well. Uh, so over the 70% of the total heat transfer resistance in the heat action your tubes is the uh, boundary laying fluids and films and foldings. Uh, remo removing the folding and uh, reducing the boundary layers uh, drag to the heat exchanger and enhance the uh, uh, the flow profile of the tube wall and the operation life spile and um, as well as increasing the heat transfer as well. So increasing the flow rates uh, as well, it will basically it was the sleek properties of the high performance coating substantially. It will reduce the wall thickness uh, friction and uh, boundary layer uh, drags and reduce that. It can reduce the uh, drag to increasing the flow rates up to 80 percent. Pressure differential uh, have been reduced by 50 percent. So without the flow degradation uh, from the corrosion and of falling, this value remains constant basically. So when come to the ROI return of investments, uh, basically this coating typically uh, lasts for 10 years and some some cases uh, by using the these coatings uh, you can uh, expect the increasing the life of the heat exchanger by two to three times and uh, we should consider uh, total replacement cost is not just only the bundle cost. So like uh, engineering time to deal with the replacement and the procurement cost and the extracting the old bundle and inserting the new bundles and uh, possible downtime and the coating will be eliminate the plugins and everything as well. So, uh, so uh, the cleaning and the maintenance uh, of the heat exchanger is important um, in keeping the system running effectively and uh, regular maintenance ensure the equipment is in the working condition and uh, prevent uh, emergency re repairs. So the cost of the cleaning of the heat exchange is a small when comparing to the loss of the production. I think you guys know that and um, so we need to maintain the heat exchanger uh, and clean the thoroughly. So this is all about the current coatings and uh, grid blasting services. So I hope you enjoy my section and uh, thank you so much uh, for your time. OK, thank you Siva for sharing us the last method. Um, so this is the end of the presentation. Now we will be opening up our Q&A session. So please feel free to raise any questions you have in the Q&A se section. By the right side, we will be addressing them now. Okay, so some of the questions that we commonly get is, um, how often is it required to clean a heat exchanger? Maybe Siva Salapan from SSD, you would like to address this question. How often it is required to clean a heat exchanger? Uh, hi guys. Uh, okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, basically, there are no hard and fast rules. It all depends on the uh, type of process the exchanger has been used for. Okay. So basically, one one criteria to look out for would be a, a drop in the uh, efficiency of the heat exchanger. The moment you see a reduction uh, in efficiency by more than maybe 30 to 40 percent, you should be getting the heat exchangers in for cleaning. Thanks. OK, thank you, Siva. So another question that we also often get is that when we are drilling the deposits out of the tubes, what are the precautions that um, we actually take to protect the tube ID material? Hi, yeah, so Marina here again. Um, so basically there is no specific uh, precaution to take because the drill bits are sized to 0 0.127 millimeter below the minimum tube ID. So which means they are made especially tube to tube ID. They are also made uh, one and a half to two and a half times uh, longer than uh, the tube ID. So they do not wobble, they bounce themselves with the water and the bits are designed with the correct tips on the leading edge um, only and rounded corners. So it won't drill into the tube wall. So there is no risk of damaging the, the tube wall. OK, thank you, Marina. So another question is, how can the coating condition be ex um, assessed or repaired if necessary? OK, uh, basically this is uh, done by the third party uh, experience inspectors uh, by visual inspection. OK, even we do the RFT as well. In case uh, sometime uh, any uh, like a touch up is required, uh, we have a fast curing uh, epoxy uh, kits available uh, to touch up. Yeah, that's how it's going to be done. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Siva. So let me just go through um, some more questions that we have received. So another one is, 
are these systems only applicable for a shell and tube heat exchanger or is it also applicable for a plate heat exchanger? Okay, um, I would like to answer this question. Uh, basically, it is referred to the tube and shell uh, heat exchangers, uh, but is not limited to this. Uh, even it can be up applicable for the plate heat exchangers as well. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about like, uh, especially on the hydrojetting and uh, cleaning services, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so how about you bundle cleaning? What is the best method? For you bundles. Hi, uh, Siva here again from SSD. For okay, basically uh, we have these uh, questions quite frequently. Okay, basically for you bundle, uh, it all also depends on the size of the tubes. Okay, if we have a larger diameter tubes, yes, we can use uh, a special custom-made nozzles which are much shorter, which would be able to negotiate the bend. So uh, this is one way to tackle uh, U bundle, especially at the U bends. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Siva. Okay, another question that we have gotten: um, How do you charge for the service? Is it by hour or by shift? <laughs> okay, maybe I can answer that again. It all depends on the kind of equipment we are going to clean. Uh, typically, for heat tubular heat exchangers, uh, we can go by the number of tubes. Uh, if it's by if it's some special equipment that we need to hydrojet, uh, then uh, we can go by team rates. Thank you. Okay, so um, if you want a more detailed quotation, do feel free to drop us an email at inquiry at Okay, let's see. Um, some more questions. So. One of the questions by Solai is, what causes the inlet tube end corrosion? Okay, uh, I'm not sure if any of us uh, would be very technically uh, sound to answer that question. Okay, basically these tube end corrosions are usually caused by uh, the, the product going into the exchanges, starting from the header of the exchanger itself. Uh, we, like I said, we are not experts on the process itself. Okay, probably the uh, the product actually entering the tubes. I'm sure there are some turbulence, and and the uh, it, it doesn't completely enters the tube. You know, it tends to have some turbulence, uh, uh, maybe impacts of the fluid against the tube ends. This can be part some of the reasons causing the uh, corrosion there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, another question is sorry, for uh, the. Sorry, uh, Julia. Um, so, sorry if I may add uh, something about the tube uh, corrosion. So the some causes of corrosion uh, that we can know is uh, uh, sometimes the tube uh, material is not suitable for the for the media. And also it will also depend on the salinity of the, the water. Uh, and then some blockages also may appear and also you know chlorides so these are some 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 type some I mean some reasons and then in terms of uh, types of corrosion that we can find uh, then we can find like uh, under deposit corrosion uh, pitting uh, crevice corrosion and you know MIC which is a uh, microbiologically induced corrosion and like erosion and also tube failure which is also one of the cause and so this is again why it's very important to to, to maintain to regularly clean your heat exchanger okay thank you Marina so a question from Bong is for the true fit method, have you ever encountered the true fit stuck inside the tube? Oh yeah, okay, let me answer this question. So basically, well, uh, normally it will not happen uh, if we are able to identify exactly which cleaner is uh, suitable for the, um, you know, for the exact type of uh, deposit that we have. So this is also why we can do an elemental analysis. So um, normally it doesn't happen. Uh, uh, so it, it didn't, it never happened to us at the moment, but uh, I think it might happen. It might happen, but in that case, it's a, uh, not a, a very big deal to 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 remove the cleaner from the tube. Okay, thank you, Marina. So another question is, if the tube, if the tube is already very blocked, can we still do the blasting? 
Mm, okay, uh, Siva here again. Huh? Uh, okay, if the tubes are very blocked, it's not recommended to use grid blasting on these tubes. Okay, basically because we are using uh, grid materials to actually blast through these tubes. If there is a, a, a great reduction in diameter, these garnite materials will start to accumulate and choke up the tubes even further. Okay, uh, blasting is more for surface cleaning. So we are expecting uh, not more than 10 or 20% reduction or blockage in the tubes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Siva from SSD. So um, we'll be ending the Q&A question now. Um, if, thank you for joining us at this webinar. We hope you learn something new and another method of how you can maintain your heat exchangers. Basically, to sum up what Marina and Siva has shared with us is that the return on investment by having deposits removed before they cause major loss of heat transfer, tube corrosion or ultimately tube failure can actually be very significant. So not only are there losses in performance to consider, but major equipment repairs often follow tube failures due to cooling water contaminants in the boiler or turbines. So maintaining your heat exchangers is really essential, improving plant heat rate, megawatt output, and it can result in tremendous savings. If you have any questions that we did not address or you have any further inquiries, please feel free to drop us an email at inquiry at and we'll get back to your inquiries. Okay. Um, also, the recording will be available via email. So if you would like the recording, a recording of this webinar, please um, reach out to me, Julia. Okay. Thank you for joining us at this webinar.